Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to Health Talk. My name is James. I am your host for Health Talk. This is the live broadcast of Health Talk. And I will start the show with these um, health-related articles from our local newspaper, the Bergen Record. Bergen Record is a local newspaper found in northeastern New Jersey, where the show is located. Both myself and the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center. The first article for this week's Health Talk will be Heartwarming News About Dark Chocolate by Elizabeth uh, Lopato from the Bloomberg News. <clears throat> Here's a win-win situation. Eating unsweetened chocolate may help your heart. Dark chocolate is rich in f- flavonoids, plant pigments that work as antioxidants when eaten. The study found that eating unsweetened chocolate increased artery elasticity, a measure of heart health, by 2.4%. The improvement among those eating cocoa with sugar was only 1.5% while those on a placebo had a 0.8% decrease in function. 39 overweight and obese subjects were told to fast for 8 to 12 hours and then eat the cocoa first uh, thing in the morning. Uh, While the finding uh, suggested a link with good heart health, the researchers said Larger trials are needed before any clinical recommendations are made. Quote, this is a small sample, but it definitely looks promising, unquote, said lead researcher Valentine uh, Najiki of the Yale Prevention Research Center. Quote, to the best of my recollection, no study has ever used sugar-free cocoa. We're the first. Unquote. Well, um, maybe a study of its kind, but I know all the research that I've read on the antioxidant power of cocoa powder, not chocolate bars, not milk chocolate, not Hershey's Kisses or any of those things. Pure cocoa powder. Most of the information I've read was, was on dark chocolate or dark cocoa powder which is the the pure 100% baker's cocoa which is what I use to make my hot cocoa I put uh, um, a, a couple tablespoons of baker's cocoa and I uh, combine it with um, either stevia or a wild um, desert cactus honey powder I'm I'm staying clear of Splenda because Splenda is still uh, very uh, questionable. uh, There's some controversy around Splenda as an artificial sweetener, as a safe version of an artificial sweetener. Um, Okay, the next article, Raising Good Cholesterol Fails to Cut Heart Attacks. Now, I just want you to understand, listeners, this could very well be uh, false propaganda from the pharmaceutical industry. So bear that in mind. I will mention that before and or after I read an article. Studies also find new drugs have safety issues. Okay, by Marilyn um, Marchioni, the Associated Press. New Orleans. The hot new strategy of trying to prevent heart disease by raising good cholesterol had more setbacks Monday as new studies show that Experimental drugs didn't work and also had safety problems. Okay, I agree with that. All right, experimental drugs. Now we know why (coughs) it didn't work. Drugs. The news follows Pfizer Incorporated abandonment in December of an $800 million investment in uh, Taurus Trapid, the leading contender in this class of drugs because it raised the risk of heart attacks and deaths. 
heart specialists have been anxious to know whether the problems extend to all such drugs and doom this approach. Quote, a lot of people think it's the next big thing and we'll need to understand what went wrong with force trapid to move forward, unquote, said Dr. Stephen Nissen, a Cleveland Clinic heart specialist and president of the American College of Cardiology. The new study reported at the uh, group's conference gave a mixed answer. The Pfizer drug seems uniquely risky, but other drugs have problems too. And even though they and the Pfizer drug raised uh, HDL good cholesterol as intended, that made no difference in the odds of heart attacks or deaths or key measures of cholesterol buildup in arteries. Doctors long have focused on lowering LDL or bad cholesterol to cut heart attack risk. Statins sold as Lipitor and Zocor and also in generic form. Lower LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, low density lipoproteins, which ferries fats from food into the bloodstream. But many statin users suffer heart attacks anyway, so doctors have been trying to boost HDL, which is the good cholesterol, okay, high density lipoproteins, which uh, transports tr uh, fat from the blood to the liver to be disposed of to further lower risk. That's why I add to my nutritional regimen a, um, a liver detoxifier uh, put out by a, uh, a company that produces uh, traditional Chinese medicinal teas. It's a multi-herbal formula. Very important in, in, in your health is to take a liver and blood detoxification product uh, as well as a colon cleanser. A mild, gentle colon cleanser that will uh, rid the body of impacted toxins which uh, clings to the wall uh, of your colon. Okay, for, further on in the article. An extended release niacin drug called uh, niaspan sold by COS Pharmaceuticals, that's KOS Incorporated, does this. But it can cause a prickly hot sensation called flushing that some people find intolerable. Pfizer, Merck and Company, and Swiss drug makers uh, ha uh, Roche Holding AG um, are testing drugs that boost HDL in a novel way. Well, of course they have to come out with a drug form of niacin. They can't use natural megadose niacin. All right, they have to patent it so they can make a fortune off of it. I just want you to understand the mindset of these drug companies. Okay, bottom line, greed is their motivation. <clears throat> Not your best interest. In several studies, there were hints of some improvements in less important measures of artery buildup, which uh, provides, quote, a glimmer of hope for future development of this class of drugs, unquote. Dr. Alan Tall of Columbia University writes in an editorial in the uh, New England Journal of Medicine that the uh, journal and the uh, Journal of uh, the American Medical Association published reports based on several of the new studies. Okay. I'll give you one, I'll give you two outstanding natural products to lower uh, the bad LDL cholesterol. Number one, an extract of red yeast rice. I'm sure you people know what red yeast rice is, even though you're wondering what I'm talking about. Just go to any local Chinese takeout and take a look at the roast pork or the barbecued spare ribs and you'll notice the uh, the red coloring on the outside of the of these meats that is red yeast rice they have it in um, standardized extract form in the capsule outstanding 
uh, for lowering LDL cholesterol. It's very similar to the statin drugs, uh, actually related to it, but a natural uh, variation. Another is the odor-free aged garlic extract capsules. Those two together with the Atkins type diet, the low carbohydrate diet, take getting rid of sugar and refined carbohydrates, that alone will knock down your LDL cholesterol. Okay. If you need additional help, you can take a chromium polynicotinate anywhere from um, 200 to um, like around 800 micrograms a day. Chromium, GTF chromium polynicotinate or chromium picolinate. Next article, the grape report card. Some benefits from wine and grape juice by Walter C. Willett, MD, Harvard Health Letters. Um, okay, here's a question from, from, uh, or from someone that's unidentified. Uh, for, the health <clears throat> for the health of my heart and arteries, how does regular consumption of red wine compared to grape juice or the equivalent in grapes? Are you asking a question that science hasn't caught up with, especially when it comes to grape juice and grapes? Let's start by looking at what you get with each of these. Grapes of all colors are full of antioxidants and myriad other phytonutrients. Some that have been identified as possible cardioprotectors are flavonoids, such as resveratrol and quercetin, very powerful, okay. Proanthocyanidins, tannins, and saponins. Well, those are the three. The, I mean, I mean the two. The two primary antioxidants is is the transresveratrol and the proanthocyanidins. That's the the primary ones. But keep in mind that the grapes you find in the grocery store aren't necessarily as hearty as those used for making wine and grape juice. And unless you eat the seeds along with the grapes, you won't get the nutrients sequestered there. Wine and grape juice uh, contain substances leached from seeds, which are crushed uh, during the, pro uh, the pressing process. Grapes, of, um, grapes <coughs> offer a small amount of fiber, which is good for the heart and digestive system. Uh, something neither wine nor grape juice deliver. It takes about 8 to 10 ounces of grapes, uh, nearly 2 cups worth, to make a glass of wine or grape juice. Well, if you're going to drink grape juice, of course I would drink the very dark uh, purple uh, Concord grape juice, like, like the one put out by Welch's. Uh, grape juice, um, not to be confused with grape-flavored drinks, which are mostly sugar water delivers slightly more antioxidants and other uh, phytonutrients than its equivalent in grapes. Red wine, like grape juice, is a rich brew of antioxidants and phytonutrients, and it contains alcohol, something not found in either grapes or grape juice. No strong evidence. Which ones can protect the heart? A few small studies have shown that red and purple grape juices reduce the stickiness of platelets, a key player in uh, blood clotting. Grape juice also slightly raises LDL, uh, good, the good cholesterol, uh, reduces inflammation and improves the ability of blood vessels to relax. Uh, the quote dose, unquote, in these studies was two eight ounce glasses of purple grape juice a day. So far though, there is no evidence that drinking grape juice has an effect on the things we really care about, like fewer heart attacks or longer lives. Uh, University of Connecticut researchers 
have shown that uh, mice fed uh, the flesh of grapes are just as protected against experimental, experimentally induced heart attack damage as mice fed grape skins. Um, whether that translates to humans remains to be seen. In fact, there is reason to believe that the amount of flavonoids in one or two glasses of grape juice is far short of what we we be needed, of what would be needed um, to have important health benefits. Also, don't forget that grapes are high in natural sugars, which are fine in small to moderate amounts, but consuming large amounts, uh, which is easy to do in the form of juice, could well increase your weight, not to mention your risk of type 2 diabetes uh, and heart disease. Um, in contrast, there is solid evidence that alcohol in moderation offers some uh, protection against heart disease and ischemic, uh, which is clot causing, stroke, and that it probably reduces uh, premature deaths in healthy people as well as those with diabetes, high blood pressure, and other chronic conditions. Although red wine uh, initially looked to be special in this uh, regard, uh, any alcohol containing beverage, red wine, white wine, beer, uh, cordials, and spirits such as gin or scotch whiskey offers uh, similar protection. Alcohol may do this by raising LDL, good cholesterol, hindering the formation of artery blocking blood clots, easing inflammation on uh, by some other as yet undiscovered route. Uh, the key is moderate uh, drinking. This means no more than two drinks a day for men and one a day for women. Interesting. Well, I know the skin is where most of the transverse veritrol and quercetin um, is contained. And pro the proanthocyanidins are in the skin too, but they are also in, in the seed. Okay, so I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of the uh, red grape um, and the Concord. Okay, any, any brightly colored um, or deep colored um, fruit or vegetable has a um, has the pigments has a, a high amount of flavonoids okay before we go to commercial let me read this article eat fish heart patients advised Mediterranean diet uh, found just as effective as low-fat regimen by Marilyn Marchione the Associated Press New Orleans a Mediterranean-style diet high in olive oil and other, quote, healthy, unquote, fats is just as good as the classic American Heart Association low-fat diet for the 8 million Americans who have suffered a heart attack and want to prevent a repeat. New research suggests. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, th then again, they're, what they're saying is uh, the real cause of heart disease is uh, is is the fat in the diet. They're not mentioning anything about about sugar, about the uh, too much insulin being the key factor here, uh, which causes a lesion in the arterial wall, which in turn causes the plaque to stick to it. Okay, the the oxidation of LDL cholesterol. Okay, I believe is due to. Um, the high amounts of insulin due to a high carbohydrate diet so but anyway they they still they're still hung up on fat okay people on either diet had one third the risk of suffering another heart attack a stroke death or other heart problem compared with heart patients eating the usual way the study found uh, the results of the study were presented uh, Sunday at an American College of Cardiology uh, conference. Doctors said it was one of the best tests of specific diets on heart health, especially because 
uh, participants stuck to it and achieved the goals for uh, various fats that researchers set. The participants also were similar in treatments and other factors, so the effect of the diets could be isolated. Quote, both diets are prudent uh, choices for people at high risk of heart disease, said Dr. Catherine Tuttle of uh, Providence Medical Research Center and Sacred Heart uh, Medical Center in Spokane, Washington. She led us the study and presented the results at the conference. Both the Heart Association and the Mediterranean diet are low in uh, saturated fat, less than 7% of total calories, and cholesterol, less than 200 milligrams a day. The typical American's uh, diet contains twice those levels or more, Tuttle said. In the study, those on the American heart diet were told to keep total fat intake to less than 30% of calories. The Mediterranean um, dieters were allowed to go up to 40%, with the extra coming from a healthier monounsaturate and polyunsaturated fats and foods like olive oil, avocados, and especially fish. Uh, it aimed for 20% to 25% of calories to come from these sources, uh, and fish three to five times per week was recommended. Uh, researchers uh, thought this diet would prove best because of the heart helpful omega-3 fatty acids in the fish. They tested this hunch on um, 202 people who had suffered heart attacks in the previous six weeks. 50 were put on the low-fat diet and 51 on the Mediterranean diet. Both groups received two individual diet counseling sessions in the first month and six group sessions over the next two years. The other 101 people served as a comparison group. Quote, they got the usual advice in the hospital that was it, uh, unquote, Tuttle said. All were prescribed standard heart care drugs such as aspirin, beta blockers, and statins to lower cholesterol. Deaths, um, um, second heart attack strokes, and heart-related hospitalizations were tracked. After four years, 83% of those uh, on the low-fat or Mediterranean diets had survived without such problems. Only 53% of the others did. Cholesterol levels improved in both diet groups, but not the comparison group. There was, <clears throat> there was no difference in risk between the low-fat and Mediterranean diet groups. Both did well. Despite being allowed more fat, those on the Mediterranean diet found it tougher than the Heart Association one, possibly because they were mostly older people, unaccustomed to eating so much fish, Tuttle said. Okay, well, um, the good fats are definitely the way to go. They are the way to go. Uh, the late, great Dr. Robert Atkins stated, and I heard him say it, that uh, the number one deficiency in America is essential fatty acids. Okay. Um, we have three, well, hmm. We have three more articles. Um, you know what? Let me, let me read this one article. It's not really that health related, but it's interesting. I mean, I'm very much into science. Study disputes mammal dinosaur link says die-off didn't cause species boom by Malcolm Ritter, the Associated Press, New York. Maybe you learned this in school. The big dinosaur die-off 65 million years ago was a liberation for mammals, and they quickly produced a bunch of new species that included ancestors of humans and other modern-day creatures. Remember? Well, a new study says, forget it. Scientists who constructed a massive evolutionary family tree for mammals found no sign of such a burst of new species at that time among 
the ancestors of present-day animals. Only mammals with no modern-day descendants show that effect. Num uh, quote, I was flabbergasted, unquote, said study co-author Ross McPhee, curator of um, uh, vertebrate zoology at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. At, at the time of the dinosaur demise, mammals were small, about the size of shrews and cats. Uh, the long-standing idea has been that once the dinosaurs were gone, mammals were suddenly free to exploit new food sources and habitats. And as a result, they produced a burst of new species. The new study says that happened to some extent, but that the new species largely, largely led to evolutionary dead ends. Uh, in contrast, no such explosion of species was found um, among the ancestors of modern-day mammals, like rodents, cats, horses, elephants, and people. Instead, researchers report in today's issue of the journal Nature, uh, they showed an initial burst between 100 million and 85 million years ago, uh, with another between about 55 million and 35 million years ago. The timing of that first period of development generally agrees with the conclusions of some previous studies um, of mammal DNA, which argue for a much earlier origin of some mammal lineages uh, than the fossil uh, record does. Uh, the second burst had shown up in the fossil record, McPhee said. But he said uh, the new study explains why scientists have been unable to find uh, relatively modern-looking ancestors of the creatures known from that time without any evolutionary boost from the dinosaur demise. Those ancestors were still relatively primitive. Interesting. Um, here at uh, Megalife 21, a newsletter censored, we're very much into science and the environment, and um, this is a fascinating article. Okay, you know what? we got two more articles, but let's go to commercial with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman right now. And, uh, and then we'll do one health talk topic. Actually, this one is going to be called, this is Health Talk, uh, Resurrecting the Ugly America. Okay, we'll do that one. When we uh, get back from commercial. Take it away, Reverend Dr. Bill. Are you reaching your fitness goals working out on your own or with a training partner? Has your health club fulfilled any of the promises made before they took that expensive annual membership fee? After you paid the expensive annual health club membership fee, does it include any personal training? Save money and avoid the high cost of one-on-one -on -one personal trainers, nutritional consultants, health club sales packages. With this complete, comprehensive fitness program with the website Personal Trainer. And are you sick and tired of all those low flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, especially you ladies with long, thick hair? If so, then power your shower. These imported shower heads cannot be found in American stores. The website Personal Trainer and Power Your Shower can be found at www.megalife21.com That's megalife21.com Newsletter Censored has been taking on the five taboos of American life, sex, politics, religion, health, and child rearing for over 30 years. Newsletter Censored will give you the tools to defeat the conservatives, to uh, handle right-wing counterfeit Christians. 
If you'd like to learn more about Newsletter Censored, then go to NewsletterCensored.com. NewsletterCensored.com. And don't forget, listeners, you can hear Health Talk every Sunday from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time from either www.pirateradionetwork.com or our website, www.megalife21.com. Also, um, Health Talk will be replayed Saturdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, you can listen to the replay of the live broadcast that we do on Sundays. The very best way to be a part of this fine or well-established organization is to go to megalife21.com and click on the newslettercensor.com link uh, that is at our homepage and get the well-established over 30-year-old newsletter. Get your annual subscription to Newsletter Censored. It was founded by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman over 30 years ago. It's hard-hitting truth that you're not going to hear anywhere in today's conventional media or the press. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman with his army of what he calls his knowledge gnomes are constantly digging and, and searching for the real hard-hitting truth that you won't hear anywhere. Um, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman will reveal uh, information that uh, will defeat a conservative and right-wing counterfeit Christians. It's a newsletter of truth, enlightenment, fighting censorship, and conservative propaganda. The Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman has four PhDs. He uh, is an ordained minister also. And uh, he has a PhD in um, theology and in divinity, in homeopathic medicine, and in naturopathy. He also has a veterinary science diploma. Um, So this man, along with books that he is writing at this moment, uh, he did come out with the original book, How to Defeat a Conservative, and uh, his next book will be The God Project. But that is the best way to be a part of this organization. Get your annual subscription to the well-established 30-year-old newsletter, Newsletter Censored. And uh, please support our sponsors as well at megalife21.com. Now we return to our scheduled program. And now it's time for our first segment of Health Talk, The Resurrection of an Ugly America. the ugly American. Attempts to forge the world's first treaty to regulate trade in genetically modified products failed this morning when the United States and five other big agricultural exporters rejected a proposal that had the support of the rest of the roughly 130 nations taking part. Okay, this came uh, out of a past uh, newspaper story uh, from the New York Times uh, dated February 24th, 1999. Okay. Hundreds of diplomats, scientists, United Nations bureaucrats, and public interest group types went to Cartagena, Colombia earlier that year hoping to conclude a treaty that would help them feel safe with the products of genetic engineering. 
For four years, they had been arguing about environmental and human health dangers, details of risk assessment, procedures for exchanging information and regulating trade, the necessity of ensuring liability and compensation, and so forth. Cartagena was scheduled to be their final negotiation. Worry about genetic engineering had come in the wake of the 1992 Rio Earth Summit and its creation, the Convention on Biological Diversity. The CBD was based on the idea that all the nations and peoples of the world could get together to safeguard what is left of the world's biological resources. In November 1995, the Convention on Biological Diversity members decided to develop a biosafety protocol, a binding treaty that would help prevent the products of genetic engineering from harming living organisms of the planet. By February 1999, there were 175 members of the Convention on Biological Diversity. The United States was not one of them. The Bush administration had refused to sign the CBD partly on the grounds that it threatened U.S. technology, especially the United States biotechnology industry, and partly on the grounds that it would impose unfair financial burdens on the United States. The Clinton administration signed the CBD, but the treaty was never ratified by the Senate. Although not a member of the CBD, the U.S. sent a large delegation to all CBD meetings, dominated the biosafety discussions, and generally enjoyed most of the privileges and few, if any, of the responsibilities of membership. By the time negotiations in Cartagena were nearly were nearing their end. The United States was the main player. For whatever reason, the size of the United States biotechnology industry and the hope of other nations not to be left behind, the difficulty of enforcing a protocol without the tactic agreement of the largest biotech player in the world, the extent of United States economic might the amount of testosterone in, in the State Department, the exaggerated power of transnational corporations, the state of the world's economy, the rest of the world led the United States play the bully at Cartagena. The United, the United States was not alone in the role of bully. Five allies, Canada, Australia, Argentina, Chile, and Uruguay helped it hold sway over the rest of the world. Six of them, like some Sydney Green Street gang in a B-movie, were known in Cartagena as the Miami Group, the city in which they had met for the first time. The protocol the Miami Group nixed the last night in Cartagena had already been negotiated into near impotence. The precautionary principle, cornerstone of the Rio Earth Summit, the better, better safe than sorry, speaking of what to do in the face of insufficient scientific evidence have been reduced to a mere mention of its name in the preamble. Liability, the guide to assigning responsibility if something goes wrong with the products of genetic engineering had been virtually eliminated. Socioeconomic concerns consideration of whether an engineered product could destroy a country's economy or agriculture or culture had been exercised. The scope of the proposed protocol had been narrowed to such an extent that no one in Cartagena was sure it actually applied to anything. The document allowed trade between countries that signed the document and those that did not thereby eliminating any incentive to sign, and the word label, quote unquote, as in the need to label genetically engineered food, was nowhere to be found. Virtually everything the biosafety high ground players had fought over the years had been lost by the end of the negotiations.
Even so, the Miami group balked at allowing a biosafety protocol which might apply to their genetically engineered commodities. From the earliest days of the CBD, leadership on biosafety had come from the developing world, not from countries with large biotechnology industries to protect. While the United States asserted that the dangers of genetic engineering were being exaggerated, that industry was doing sufficient testing that too stringent a protocol would not meet the free trade tests of the World Trade Organization, the negotiator for the African group. Ethiopia's Dr. Tewald Burhan Gebre Egziabher, doing my best to pronounce this, uh, reminded the United States that a biosafety protocol was meant to be an environmental treaty, not a trade treaty. While John Neville, representative of the Seychelles, uh, reasoned that safety not to be sacrificed to expediency, quote unquote, Raph Pomerantz, one-time policy analyst with Friends of the Earth and the World Resources Institute, now Deputy Assistant to the Secretary of State, ranted that he was, quote, not going to let anyone do anything that might harm a $68 billion a year industry in the United States, unquote. The whole tone of the Cartagena meeting suggested that someone was trying to pull strings. There was gossip that Andrew Young had been sent to Africa before the meeting to whip the biosafety troublemakers into line. There were whispers that President Clinton had made a last minute phone call to the head of the European Union seeking to nudge him into the Miami camp. Some of the rumored pressures may have worked. The Europeans had arrived in Cartagena saying that they would play the middle ground, quote, between the extremes, unquote, of the Miami group and the African group. Last, I mean, late, late the last night, the representative of the European Union, a group of nations whose citizens were demanding labeling, uh, moratoria, and bans, quietly agreed to scuttle the precautionary principle. Quote, it's all just a, it's all just the big boys jockeying for market position, unquote, explained one diplomat. Further adding to the Byzantine humid atmosphere was the fact that so many of the early meetings of importance in Cartagena were held in rooms behind closed doors. At almost any hour you could find angry delegates in the corridors outside those doors saying how it all reminded them of, quote, the old colonial game, unquote, or the old days under the Soviets, quote, unquote. Whatever was going on and whoever was really in charge, the Miami group held firm, insisting on a narrowly focused treaty with minimal impact on industry, claiming the United States had made many compromises, but not dealing what they were, but not detailing what they were. Uh, Rafe Pomerantz later would be quoted in the New York Times saying, quote, there were two compromises we were not prepared to make. One is to tie up trade in the world's food supply. The second is to allow this regime, without a lot of deliberation, to undermine the World Trade Organization trading regime, unquote. The Miami group refused to allow the protocol to apply to their genetically engineered corn and wheat, arguing that commodities meant for eating and processing do not enter the environment, but not explaining where else is it possible for them to go. They kibosh the protocol. 
at about five in the morning, several hours after negotiations were to have concluded. Exhausted delegates agreed to suspension of negotiations. Talks were to be resumed no later than May of 2000. The New York Times reported that, quote, bleary-eyed delegates from many nations expressed fury at the United States, accused it of intransigence and of putting the interests of its world-leading farming and biotechnology industries above the environment, quote, unquote. While the headline in the Miami Sun Sentinel reported just as bluntly, quote, critics claim United States greed is at root of refusal to sign biosafety treaty, unquote. Taking it personally, uh, the person uh, who reported this story originally was there in Cartagena, pretty bleary-eyed and furious, like many non-governmental organization representatives. The person had followed, or the reporter had followed the negotiations for years. Convinced of the need for a protocol, we all, we had all consulted scientists and put out white papers and published booklets and given workshops and ignored our families while we were organized consultations and rallies and whatever else we thought might bring some biosafety. And at the end of it all, none of it seemed to matter. To be there that last night in Cardana, and this is um, a detailed description of what happened there by this reporter, and to realize that the whole world might get no biosafety because one country and its allies refused to allow their genetically engineered commodities to be regulated. To know that there were environmental and human health hazards and they would not be met by precaution. To remember what the head of the United States delegation, Melinda Kimball, had said to a group of NGOs the night before, quote, the only treaty less popular in the United States than the Convention on Biological Diversity is the Treaty on the Rights of the Child, unquote and to recall the audible gasp that followed her remarks as the uh, meaning sunk in. The future was officially unpopular in the United States. It was too much. Right after negotiations broke down in Cartagena, I ran into someone from the Food and Drug Administration, the wonderful FDA, <laughs> in the corridor. He was on the U.S. delegation. How can you stand yourself, the reporter asked him. A nearby delegate from Eastern Europe overheard uh, the reporter and looked shocked. Quote, Beth gets very emotional, unquote, the FDA guy explained. Quote, if rationality me means risking ecological and human health on the planet for the sake of profits of one industry, unquote, I responded, then I certainly hope I'm emotional. You, quote, you see what I mean, unquote, said the FDA guy to the delegate. Quote, you're an evil man, unquote, I told the FDI guy. The listening delegate who happened to know me attempted to intervene, quote, Beth, this is not an evil man. I know him. He's a very nice person, really, unquote. Quote, no, I explained. This is not a nice person. He may seem like a nice person. He may be very pleasant, but he carries an evil message. If I allow myself to think of him as a nice man, if I, if I do not insist that he is personally responsible for the messages he utters, then one day... I am certain he will come and tell me that he was only following orders, unquote. The delegate got my message. I'm not sure about the FDA guy. A few steps down the corridor, the reporter ran into the, re the reporter from the New York Times. 
quote, Beth, what do you think about all this, unquote? Uh, quote, what do you think I mean? The environment's always the loser, always. There was no moral high ground here. There was no scientific high ground. Uh, there was just cheap power politics, unquote. Uh, I was still upset, meaning the reporter, when uh, I got on the plane for Bogota, Colombia, about two hours later. The plane was full of tired-looking delegates. I found my seat. Uh, it was on the aisle. When the window seat occupant showed up, it turned out to be Melinda Kimball, head of the U.S. delegation. I started to laugh. By then, I'd already shouted at her a lot. Everyone on the plane had probably heard me shout at her at least once. I had nothing more to say. I moved my legs aside so she could climb into her seat. I took out a book and turned back to her as far as I could without undoing the seatbelt. I did speak to her the whole trip. The politics of shunning. When I got back home, I allowed myself one last useless gesture. I wrote the president in part. I told him, quote, there was a lot of bitterness and anger at the end of the negotiations in Cartagena, and while not all such feeling should be attributed to the bullying style of diplomacy favored by our delegation, all the anger and bitterness, I believe, will come to be directed at the people and government of the United States. Okay, this is all um, detailed description by this reporter. Quote, because the United States has demonstrated an ability to push its way into the heart of negotiations among parties to a treaty our country has not yet ratified, it will be assumed, and perhaps correctly so, that we are behind every uh, untoward event, utterance, or outcome associated with this treaty. Every use of rules to subvert or prevent the utterance of opposing views and there was a great deal of such so-called rule manipulation in Cartagena, will be designated an act of the United States. Every personal slight or embarrassment experienced by any of the delegates, and there were many such slights in Cartagena, will be experienced as an, as an affront committed by the United States. Every utterance about the needs of our 68 billion a year industry will be understood as an attack on the environment and citizens of other countries. The continuous argument about protection of our industries will make us hated. We will be seen as the fat, despised, and privileged members of a, of a society seeking only to make more money and become more privileged. Quote, one of the third world delegates in Cartagena, a gentle scientist who found himself among many other outside closed doors, waiting to hear news from the few real negotiators within, said to me, and this is a reporter uh, that he was speaking to, I honestly thought I was doing something here. I honest, honestly thought our discussions in the contact room in the contact groups were meaningful. I honestly thought I was making a contribution worthy of what it cost my government to send me here. But this, where all of us wait while they try to force a protocol by using rules most of us hardly know. This is just brutal power, just like the old colonial days. Quote, another delegate asks, me on the last day. Do they wish to push us into the arms of Saddam? Uh, well, this is embarrassing, uh, Reverend Dr. Bill, uh, you know, because the United States is supposed to <laughs> set a positive example to the rest of the world because we are the uh, so-called uh, wealthiest and most powerful nation, and we are uh, supposedly God's country, and, uh, you know, it's always God bless America, it's never God bless anybody else, uh, and we're supposed to set positive examples, but the only example 
we tend to be setting abroad, which is causing a great deal of dissension, is uh, the example that we're all um, extremely uh, greedy, self-serving, um, you know, uh, spoiled people. I mean, in this case, it's the greed of corporate America. Uh, I'm sure you have some comments that you would like to make about uh, this week's um, health talk. Okay. <clears throat> that came from the archives, uh, the best of health talk, when I used to do the show with the uh, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. I did it for four years with uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman and William H. Morrow III. Okay, and uh, speaking of William H. Morrow III, um, let us go right now to commercial with William H. Morrow III. And I just want to uh, let everyone know that the replay of Sunday's live broadcast of Health Talk um, can be found, um, can be heard and uh, every Saturday, s starting at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, is the, uh, the replay of uh, the live broadcast of, uh, of Health Talk. Uh, I mean, the replay of it, and, and of course the live broadcast is Sundays, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, William H. Morrow III, Commercial Voiceover Specialist. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club? And after they have your big, overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. If you're one of those people who are sick and tired of taking a shower with those annoying low-flow shower heads, where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, then check out Power Your Shower. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. Stop paying full retail prices for uh, brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. Just simply go to www.megalife21.com, then click on the drop down menu, then click on website personal trainer, and you'll see a, a banner at the top of the page. Click on that and start saving up to 75% off brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. If you are a, a United States uh, based uh, fundraising organization, get the ticket that sells itself, professional wrestling. Here at the Ultimate Fundraiser, we have a family oriented, star studded, action packed, professional wrestling show that the whole family can enjoy. We will even travel to your area in the country if you purchase the entire show. If you purchase the entire show as a fundraising organization, uh, you can keep all the profits, 100% of the profits on ticket sales and the sale on food and beverage also. So, if you're looking for the ultimate fundraiser, go to www.megalite21.com, click on the drop-down menu, and click on the ultimate fundraiser. And now, back to our regular live scheduled show. Okay, we're back. <coughs> we're going to finish off um, the last two articles, um, the newspaper articles that are health-related on this week's Health Talk. Okay, um, Heart Study Finds Most Angioplasties Offer Little Help. All right. 
It suggests drugs are equally effective, uh, less risky. Okay, I'm not in favor of this. I'm going to read it anyway because I don't um, promote um, pharmaceuticals. Uh, by Marilyn Marchioni, the Associated Press. I wonder if Marilyn is a. I wonder if Marilyn's husband or father is a, in the uh, pharmaceutical industry. She seems to be putting out a lot of articles about pharmaceuticals and uh, um, traditional allopathic uh, doctors, drug pushing doctors, legal drug pushers. New Orleans. More than half a million people a year with chest pain are getting a procedure to unclog their arteries that is unnecessary or premature because drugs are just as effective. In the judgment of a landmark study that challenges one of the most uh, common practices in heart health, in heart care, the stunning uh, results found that angioplasty did not save lives or prevent heart attacks in non-emergency uh, heart patients. An even bigger surprise, angioplasty gave only slight and temporary relief from chest pain, the main reason it is done. Quote, by five years, there was really no significant difference, unquote, in symptoms, said Dr. William Bowden of Buffalo General Hospital, in New York. Quote, few would have expected such results, unquote. You know, <laughs> you, you, you just got to really understand where this information is coming from when I read certain articles, okay. Um, he led the study and gave results Monday at a meeting of the American College of Cardiology there, they also were published online by the New England Journal of Medicine and will be in the journal's April 12 issue. Angioplasty remains the top treatment for people having a heart attack or hospitalized with worsened symptoms. But most angioplasties are done on a non-emergency basis to relieve chest pain caused by clogged arteries crimping the heart's blood supply, uh, those patients now should try drugs first, experts say. If that does uh, not help, they can consider angioplasty or bypass surgery, which, unlike angioplasty, does save lives. Oh, really? Uh, what about chelation therapy? They don't mention that. Okay, that would be the alternative medicine approach. Uh prevent heart attacks and give lasting chest pain relief. In the study, only one third of the people treated with drugs ultimately needed angioplasty or a bypass. Quote, you are not putting yourself at risk of death or a heart attack if you defer, unquote. And considering the safety worries about heart stents used to keep arteries open after angioplasty, it may be wise to wait said Dr. Stephen Nissen, a Cleveland Clinic heart specialist and president of the College of Cardiology. Why did angioplasty not help more? It fixes only one blockage at a time, whereas drugs affect all the arteries, experts said. Also, the clogs treated with angioplasty are not the really dangerous kind. Quote, even though it goes against uh, institution. The blockages that are severe that cause chest pain are less likely to be the source of a heart attack than uh, segments in the uh, artery that are not severely blocked, unquote, said Dr. David Marin, a uh, Vanderbilt University cardiologist who helped lead the new study. About 1.2 million angioplasties are done in the United States each year through a blood vessel in the groin. Uh, doctors uh, snake a tube to a blocked uh, heart artery. A tiny uh, balloon is inflated to flatten the clog and mesh a uh, scaffold and a mesh scaffold stent is uh, usually placed. 
The procedure already has lost some popularity because of emerging evidence that popular drug-coated stents can raise the risk of blood clots months, at, months later. Uh, the new study shifts the argument from which type of stent to use to whether to do the procedure at all. Yeah, they're always finding uh, negative side effects or, or neg uh, negative uh, information later on. It's just amazing how the FDA just lets things go to market so quickly. Okay, of course, someone from the pharmaceutical industry told me that everything is very well tested. Yes, of course, what else is she going to say? She's kissing the ass of the people who sign her paycheck. Okay. Okay, the last article. The last article is plastic compound found in pet food. Recall widens. Now, here we go again. I'm sure a lot of you people know about the uh, latest misfortune of uh, people's beloved pets becoming very sick with like kidney failure or and or dying from toxic substances found in pet food mostly moist pet food in a can but now uh, it's it's uh, infiltrating into possibly dry uh, I will read on Okay, plastic compound found in pet food, recall widens, but FDA testing fails to detect presence of rat poison. By Andrew Bridges, the Associated Press, Washington. <laughs> Federal testing of recalled pet foods turned up a chemical used to make uh, plastics, but failed to confirm the presence of a cancer drug also used as rat poison. I wonder if that's Coumadin. No. No, no, it's Coumadin used is, is, is a heart, is a cardiology drug, which is rat poison, okay. Cardiology drug, so that wouldn't be, it might not be Coumadin. The recall expanded Friday to include the first dry pet food. See? The Food and Drug Administration said Friday it found melamine in samples of the menu foods pet food involved in the original recall and in imported wheat gluten used as an ingredient in the company's wet style products. Cornell University scientists also found melamine uh, in the urine of sick cats as well as in the kidney of one cat that died after eating some of the recall food. Meanwhile, Hill's Pet Nutrition recalled its prescription diet MD feline dry cat food. The food included wheat gluten from the same supplier that menu foods use. The recall didn't involve any other prescription diet or science diet products, said the company, a division of Colgate Palmolive Company. The FDA was working to rule out the possibility that the contaminated wheat gluten could have made it into any food, into any human food. However, melamine is toxic only in high doses, experts said, leaving its role in the pet deaths unclear. Menu Foods recalled 60 million containers of cat and dog food sold throughout North America under nearly uh, 100 brands. Uh, earlier this month after animals died of kidney failure after eating the Canadian company's products. It is not clear how many uh, pets may have been poisoned by the uh, apparently contaminated food, although anecdotal reports suggest um, hundreds if not thousands have died. The FDA alone has received more than 8,000 complaints uh, the company more than 300,000. Company officials on Friday would not provide updated numbers of pets sickened by or killed by its contaminated product. Uh, pet owners would be compensated for 
uh, veterinary bills and the deaths of any dogs and cats linked to his company's products, the company said. Oh, isn't that nice? They're, they're going to they're gonna monetarily compensate people for their beloved pets. That, that's going to really make up for the loss of the cat or dog. The uh, melamine finding came a week after scientists at the uh, New York State Food Laboratory identified a cancer drug in rat poison called uh, uh, amino, um, amino opterin. Aminopterin. Aminopterin. As the likely culprit in the pet food. But the FDA said it could not confirm that finding, nor have researchers at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey when they looked at tissue samples taken from dead cats, and experts at the University of uh, Gulef detected aminopterin in some samples of the recalled pet food, but only in the parts per billion or trillion range. Quote, biologically, that means nothing. It wouldn't do anything, unquote, said Grant Maxey, a veterinary pathologist at the Canadian University. Quote, this is a puzzle, unquote. Meanwhile, New York officials stuck to their aminopterin um, finding and pointed out that it was unlikely that melamine could have poisoned any of the animals thought to have died after eating the contaminated pet food. Melamine is used to make plastic kitchenware and is used as a fertilizer in Asia. Yeah, the, um, the imported wheat gluten is from China. So, a lot of things coming from overseas, particularly China, and uh, that is uh, sold to the U.S., they always seem to find some hazardous chemical in it. I, I heard uh, stories that the, um, uh, the de uh, all the, um, the, 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 was it the DDT that was outlawed in the United States um, decades ago. Uh, of course, the companies that made the DDT couldn't dispose of it just like that. They had to sell it. They had to make money off it. They couldn't take a loss. So they sold it internationally. And uh, from what I hear, the produce grown in Chile, uh, countries like uh, Chile, and maybe there are others, okay, are still using uh, the deadly DDT as, um, a, um, as an insecticide. Okay. <coughs> So, in the wintertime, uh, a lot of the produce does come from south of the border and overseas, and uh, as a result, may have DDT on it. So, that's a wonderful thought. I think bananas were included in that. Okay. Um, okay, that, that concludes the last of the health-related articles. That's it for the health-related articles for this week on the live broadcast of Health Talk. Let us go to commercial with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And then we'll go to our next health talk topic, which is control release alpha lipoic acid. Take it away, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Are you reaching your fitness goals working out on your own or with a training partner? Has your health club fulfilled any of the promises made before they took that expensive annual membership fee? After you paid the expensive annual health club membership fee, does it include any personal training? Save money and avoid the high cost of one-on-one -on -one personal trainers, nutritional consultants, health club sales packages. With this complete comprehensive fitness program with the website Personal Trainer. And are you sick and tired of all those low flow shower heads where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, especially you ladies with long, thick hair? If so, 
then power your shower. These imported shower heads cannot be found at American stores. The website Personal Trainer and Power Your Shower can be found at www.megalife21.com. That's megalife21.com. Newsletter Censored has been taking on the five taboos of American life, sex, politics, religion, health, and child rearing for over 30 years. Newsletter Censored will give you the tools to defeat the conservatives, to uh, handle right-wing counterfeit Christians. If you'd like to learn more about Newsletter Censored, then go to NewsletterCensored.com. NewsletterCensored.com. Okay, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is absolutely right. NewsletterCensored.com and that annual subscription to the well-established over 30-year-old newsletter is the best way to be a part of this organization. Get it now. Okay, the next segment of Health Talk is about control release alpha lipoic acid. Okay, listeners, this week's health talk is about controlled release alpha lipoic acid helps stabilize blood sugar. The introduction of a controlled release form of alpha lipoic acid is good news for the millions who suffer with type 2 diabetes. The benefits of alpha lipoic acid for the treatment of diabetic complications have long been known and studies have shown it's helpful in reducing blood glucose levels. However, before the development of a controlled release tablet, the most effective form was intravenous administration. How alpha lipoic acid comes to the rescue. The fact that levels of alpha lipoic acid are low in diabetics may have first led to the idea to administer it intravenously as a treatment for diabetic neuropathy. This method has been used for more than 30 years in Europe where it has been shown to reduce the symptoms of neuropathy. Pain, burning, tingling, and loss of sensation. And to help prevent progression of the condition. But understanding how and why alpha lipoic acid works is perhaps a more recent revelation. Type 2 adult onset diabetes is the most common form of diabetes, striking 90 to 95 percent of the 13.2 million people diagnosed with the disease. It usually begins with insulin resistance, a disorder in which the cells do not use insulin effectively. When insulin is not used properly or not enough is produced, glucose accumulates in the bloodstream. Over time, elevated glucose, blood sugar, levels can cause serious complications, including nerve damage to the lower extremities, neuropathy, damage to the eyes that can cause blindness, retinopathy, kidney failure, hypertension, and heart disease. In diabetes, we believe that the cells cannot cope with the high glucose levels, says uh, Ira Goldfein, MD, professor of medicine and physiology at the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. There's an overproduction of free radicals and reactive oxygen radicals that damage the DNA in cells. In diabetics, this damage occurs in the kidneys, the eyes, the nerves, and the vascular system. There's a huge need for antioxidants to control this oxidative stress. In fact, recent studies have shown that oxidative stress plays a major role in the development of insulin resistance. One such study 
which was conducted by Goldfein and colleagues, showed that oxidative stress could produce insulin resistance in muscle cells. Interestingly, cells treated with alpha-lipoic acid were fully protected from the effects of oxidative stress. So, how does alpha-lipoic acid work? Experts believe that it's the powerful antioxidant actions of alpha-lipoic acid that account for its effectiveness. A fatty acid found in trace amounts in all living things. Alpha-lipoic acid is a potent free radical scavenger. It also has the unique ability to regenerate other antioxidants, namely vitamins C and E, and can repair oxidized proteins. The benefits of controlled release. While trials using oral alpha-lipoic acid have shown some benefits, there have remained doubts that, that oral delivery could approach the effects found with intravenous administration. The challenge of oral supplementation, experts explain, is that alpha-lipoic acid is rapidly cleared from the blood by the liver and must be transformed into another more usable form for maximum benefits as both an antioxidant and a glucose disposal agent. The development of a controlled release formula, however, seems to have overcome these challenges. In fact, a study led by researcher Joseph Evans, PhD, showed that a controlled release formula uh, glucotize maintain therapeutic plasma levels two and a half hours longer than other alpha lipoic acid formulas. The study also showed that the controlled release alpha lipoic acid formula significantly lowered uh, fructosamine levels in type 2 diabetics after 12 weeks of treatment. Fructosamine is an indicator for glucose control over a three-week average, explains Evans. We found that with a daily 1,200 milligram dose, there was a 15% drop in fructosamine levels. In some cases, this allowed a lowering of diabetes medications. New research shows promise. All those studies to assess the effectiveness of controlled release alpha lipoic acid on neuropathy have not been completed. The well established positive effects of intravenous administration indicate that this formula will also have these benefits. Research is being conducted to ascertain its effect on other diabetic complications and a study is planned to test its benefits in treating type type 1 diabetes. Interestingly, some of the most exciting research on controlled release alpha lipoic acid is with conditions other than diabetes. A new preliminary unpublished study shows that a single dose of controlled release alpha lipoic acid significantly improves artery flow an action that may prove valuable in the treatment of cardiovascular disease. Guidelines for use. Controlled release alpha lipoic acid is available in 300 milligram tablets. While trial dosages have ranged up to 1,800 milligrams per day, for most people, 300 milligrams daily is an appropriate dosage. If sleep is disturbed, cut back. For glucose control and relief of neuropathy symptoms, take two tablets before breakfast and one tablet before dinner. If additional glucose control is needed or neuropathy symptoms persist, a tablet before lunch can be added. To improve absorption, take each dose 30 to 60 minutes before eating. When starting to use control release alpha lipoic acid, diabetics should continue to take their regular medications and work closely with their doctors to monitor insulin levels. 
blood sugar needs to be monitored closely to avoid hypoglycemia. Also, individuals taking blood pressure drugs should be aware that they may need to reduce the dosage of these drugs when taking alpha lipoic acid. This product should not be used by those who have a sensitivity to alpha lipoic acid or sulfur containing compounds by pregnant or lactating women or those who are thiamine deficient. Okay, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, would you like to comment on this week's health talk uh, concerning uh, uh, controlled release alpha lipoic acid? Okay, our next um, health talk topic, okay, will be, uh, let's see, well, since we did a, prog um, a segment here about um, the poor unfortunate dogs and cats who have died from the poison pet food, let us do this one here from the archives of the best of health talk called Cold care for puppies and kittens. Okay, listeners, this week's health talk is going to be for animal lovers. It is uh, called Cold Care for Kittens and Puppies. Um, scenario here. Uh, okay, I have a new puppy that always seems to have a cold. He just doesn't seem to be healthy. Is there anything natural I can try? I suggest giving supplemental bovine colostrum a try. Colostrum, packed with protein, growth factors, enzymes, hormones, and micronutrients has a great potential for healing. I use it for kittens and puppies that are not thriving, as well as for sick older animals or simply as a health booster. All my geriatric patients go on colostrum. Animals often improve within days. I use a powdered supplement from New Zealand available at health food stores and pharmacies. The dosage is one eighth to one half teaspoon four times a day, depending on the size of the animal. Dilute in water and feed directly with a syringe or a baby bottle. Or if the animal is eating solids, sprinkle the powder on the food. Once an animal is stable, reduce frequency to once a day and use about one third teaspoon for up to 25 pounds of body weight. One third teaspoon per 25 pounds is also my starting dosage for older animals. Colostrum bolsters the digestive tract and the immune system, which are intrinsically connected. The gut is not only where digestion takes place, but also where the body neutralizes pathogens that enter through the mouth. Colostrum balances the gut's beneficial bacteria, fortifies the critical immune agents operating there, and enhances nutrient absorption. I have great results in dogs and cats with chronic or acute diarrhea and immune deficiencies. Not to mention the uh, miraculous results with humans with colostrum. Four. For persistent problems, consult a veterinarian. Okay, uh, tip of the month. When you feed your pet, think of quality and not just the quantity of protein, fat, carbohydrate, and added vitamins listed on the pet food label. Freshness, wholesomeness. Energy and digestibility of food also counts. In these categories, holistic veterinarians give low grades to most commercial foods. Supplement your pet with nutritious table scraps 
to expand the variety of the menu and nutritional intake. Uh, personally, myself, I am very partial to a company called Innova when it comes to feeding uh, dogs and cats, kittens and puppies. Just compare the ingredients with all of the other brands, and now nothing comes close to Innova for quality. Okay, the next uh, listeners, uh, the final segment of this week's uh, health talk is called Eat Your Veggies, Fight Breast Cancer. Breast cancer patients may uh, help keep the disease in check with a high fiber, low fat diet that includes lots of fruits and vegetables. One reason may be that fiber flushes estrogen, uh, of course high levels of which may promote breast cancer out of the body. A year-long study of breast cancer patients showed that women who follow a cancer prevention diet, including high fruit and vegetable intake and reduced fat consumption, in addition to uh, participating in related cooking classes and phone counseling, had significantly lower estrogen levels than a comparison group. The group that ended up with higher estrogen levels ate a higher fat diet and received cooking classes that were not specifically aimed at cancer prevention. Average fiber intake in the cancer prevention group was 29 grams per day, in contrast to 22 grams per day in the comparison group. Average fat intake in the cancer prevention group was 21%. Per day, while the comparison group's average fat intake was 28%. This is from the Journal of Clinical Oncology, 2004. Okay, listeners, um, the next segment, which uh, I would like to continue from the previous one to finalize this week's health talk, is called Brain Food. Creativity, enriching experiences, plus the right nutrients can produce new brain cells. There's a popular misconception that we use only 10% of our brains. Another myth is that after we reach adulthood, we don't make any more brain cells. It turns out that we use far more of our brains than researchers once thought, and we routinely grow new brain cells. Nutrition and life experiences influence the number of neurons and synapses, which is connections, in our brains. Described simply, to make new brain cells, an existing cell must first duplicate its deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. The new DNA will contain the biological instructions that govern cell function. But to make new DNA, a brain cell must have adequate amounts of several B vitamins, including folic acid and vitamins B3, B6, and B12. Other nutrients are also needed for DNA to do its job, including vitamin C, zinc, selenium, and amino acids. Without them, you can't make either new DNA or new cells. Your day-to-day -day experiences also foster or inhibit neurogenesis. For example, stresses during infancy interfere with the production of brain cells and lead to smaller brains. Conversely, experiences that provide psychological security stimulate growth of brain cells. This dynamic activity of the brain continues throughout life and brain cells and synapses are formed and reshaped every day. Negative emotions, work pressures, and bad relationships reduce neurogenesis and increase the risk of depression and anxiety. Meanwhile, enriching experiences have a more positive effect. Ernest Rossi, PhD, an eminent uh, psychologist and author of the 
Psychobiology of Gene Expression, uh, published by W.W. W. Norton and Company, 2002, describe how we can promote healthy brain development as adults. He wrote that novelties such as uh, travel to new places, uh, being creative or enjoying other people's creativity, and exercise can promote neurogenesis and healing. All that should make perfect sense. After all, it's more proof of our mind-body connection. Okay, uh, I want to talk about uh, the herb Rhodiola rosea, which is uh, also commonly known as Arctic root. Rhodiola rosea is a, a relative newcomer in herbal medicine in the United States, but its therapeutic powers are well known in many other parts of the world. Uh, in the Rhodiola Revolution uh, by Rodale Books 2004 by Richard P. Brown, M.D., and Patricia L. Gerbarg, M.D., you'll find compelling research spanning 30 years plus case studies documenting the herb's benefits for health concerns, including stress, fatigue, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, memory, and sexual function, tips on finding a quality product, plus storage, usage, and dosage guidelines are included. Average dosage for rhodiola is 200 to 400 milligrams per day. Kids low on vitamin D. Kids are filling up on soft drinks instead of milk and spending less time in the sun. Uh, well, I blame computers and video games for that. And, you know, it's up to the parents uh, to monitor their children to make sure they're consuming the right foods and beverages and a lot of parents evidently are not paying close attention to their kids. Okay, thanks to, uh, thanks to the Dr. Spock mentality and approach to parenting, it's, it's a complete failure, okay? The whole concept of, uh, of not disciplining your child the old-fashioned way. And it's taking its toll. A study of 11 to 18-year-olds in Boston found that about one-fourth were deficient in vitamin D and 5% were severely deficient. This may be an indication of a national problem. Adequate vitamin D synthesized from sunlight and available in fortified cereals and milk is crucial for calcium absorption and bone development. Kids who said they drank milk and ate cereal were less likely to be low on vitamin D according to study results that analyze blood samples from 307 kids. For kids who don't like milk or are allergic to dairy products, there are vitamin D enriched juices and multivitamins are a good option. I would go with the multivitamin and not so much the juice and you know we don't want uh, I mean there's enough hyperactivity in children nowadays attention deficit disorder and all this caused by too many uh, carbs in the diet too much when in the case of children too much sugar um, <clears throat> says the uh, study's author Catherine M. Gordon MD from the archives of pediatrics and adolescent medicine 2004 and um, to finalize this week's health talk, this is called, this is a cute article called Use Your Marbles. I find this interesting because I see these marbles at the dollar store every time I go. Ever feel like you're losing it? Try keeping a bowl of marbles on your desk or wherever you spend most of your time working or studying. While they can serve as a lovely aesthetic addition to your office or home decor, their more important function is to act as your personal reflexology masseuse, 
put a handful under your desk and roll your feet over them. This will stimulate the reflex points on your soles, which will relax and invigorate your entire body. For those of you that are familiar with reflexology, very similar to acupuncture. Stimulates uh, certain vital pressure points uh, under your feet, or it could be your hands, uh, or even your ears if you massage them. Uh, certain pressure points are connected to every organ in every section of your body, and it involves the free flowing and um, stimulation of the electromagnetic pathways known as meridians. Uh, here's how, courtesy of SPA, Simple Steps for Health and Well-Being by Andrea McLeod, Chronicle Books, 2004. Place a handful of marbles on the floor or by your feet. Roll both feet slowly and firmly over the marbles. Your massage can go on for as long as you wish, but give yourself at least five minutes. Note, using a golf ball will have the same effect. Make sure to uh, stash one in your bag when you travel. But I think the marbles might be a little more stimulating because you have the rotation of many small balls uh, rather than just the one. Okay, interesting. All right, Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, would you like to comment on this week's Health Talk at all? Okay, the next, actually, before we go to the last uh, health talk topic, let us, uh, let us go to, let's see, commercial with uh, William H. Morrow III, our commercial voiceover specialist. Take it away, Billy Morrow. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results, even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. If you're one of those people who are sick and tired of taking a shower with those annoying low-flow shower heads, where it seems like it takes forever to rinse off, then check out Power Your Shower. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. Stop paying full retail prices for uh, brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins. Just simply go to www.megalife21.com then click on the drop down menu then click on website personal trainer and you'll see a, a banner at the top of the page click on that and start saving up to 75% of brand name nutritional supplements and vitamins If you are a, a United States-based uh, uh, fundraising organization, get the ticket that sells itself, professional wrestling. Here at the Ultimate Fundraiser, we have a family-oriented, star-studded, action-packed, professional wrestling show that the whole family can enjoy. We will even travel to your area in the country if you purchase the entire show. If you purchase the entire show as a fundraising organization, uh, you can keep all the profits, 100% of the profits on ticket sales and the sale on food and beverage also. So if you're looking for the ultimate fundraiser, go to www.megalife21.com Click on the drop-down menu and click on the ultimate fundraiser. And now, back to our regular live scheduled show. Okay, the last health topic for this week's live broadcast of Health Talk. 
will be the truth about cellulite. I know spring is in the air and people are thinking about Memorial Day weekend which is the uh, unofficial first day of summer and the beach for those that live on the coasts. You think about going to the beach and when you think about going to the beach uh, you ladies out there thinking uh, think about your figure and how you look in a um, full-length um, one-piece um, bathing suit if for those of you that are not genetically blessed uh, you know with a, with a bikini body or those of you that are ge genetically uh, in sh great shape and have worked out hard um, all year and throughout winter okay who, who have ate properly and worked out and have uh, exercise self-control um, when the major holidays came around some of you don't have far to go um, to be bikini ready but there are others that do not have the bikini body who are less fortunate or maybe you don't maybe they have a higher predisposition uh, to, to fat cells through, through a poor childhood diet they have more fat cells than the bikini uh, clad women or maybe you just let yourself go and you just picked out during the uh, major holidays during the winter and and put on whatever 10 20 pounds or more regardless uh, when the weather starts getting nice after the New Year's resolution in January where a lot of people start joining health clubs okay and uh, you know once the nice weather rolls around and, and the end of winter is here, people start thinking about Memorial Day weekend uh, and um, getting in shape for the summer. So this next Health Talk topic, the last one of this show for this week, will be the truth about cellulite, um, which is related to um, how women look uh, in their bathing suit or... Um, or in their birthday suit or whatever. Uh, women are very concerned about that. Women tend to have cellulite um, where men usually don't. So this segment is applicable to you ladies. Okay, the truth about cellulite. Okay, listeners, this uh, week's health talk is going to be... Uh, Fat or fiction, the truth about cellulite. You may never be able to completely eliminate it, but you can fight it every step of the way. Here's what works and what doesn't. In 1973, a salon owner, Nicole uh, Ronsard, published one of the first books on cellulite, titled Cellulite, Those Lumps, Bumps, and Bulges You Couldn't Lose Before. Uh, by the Beauty and Health Publishing Corporation. Since then, doctors, researchers, and uh, aestheticians have had conflicting opinions about what cellulite really is. According to many doctors, it's fat with a twist. It's just the way women were put together, says uh, Mitchell Goldman, M.D., associate clinical professor of uh, dermatology at the University of California, San Diego, and medical director at La Jolla Spa, MD. Quote, men store fat in beer bellies, women store it in cellulite, unquote. So why the lumps and bumps? Between the skin and the muscle is a space that's filled with fat cells. Fibrous bands in the fascia surrounding the muscles do not give to allow the fat to spread under the skin, but instead force the fat to the surface. First, the bad news. No matter how thin you are, you can still have bumps. Quote, you'll lose cellulite only if you lose all your body fat, unquote. 
says Goldman. But there's some hope. Cellulite can be treated with lifestyle changes and a few natural products. Diet do's and don'ts. Allergies and food sensitivities may contribute to cellulite. Quote, fluid retention can form in response to any toxin or food sensitivity, says Kat James, author of The Truth About Beauty, Beyond Words Publishing, 2003. Quote, the body will accumulate water in order to dilute and sequester toxins into pockets to keep them from the vital organs and bloodstream, unquote. If you have food sensitivities or allergies, try eliminating the offending substances from your diet for at least two weeks. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with a conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Megalife 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet.